I was absolutely shocked to find out how few people actually know that you could be using the GPT-4 model for free right now. And I'm not talking about some weird sketchy website on the edge of the internet. I'm talking about the website of one of the biggest companies out there, Microsoft. In today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that without even taking out your wallet out of your pocket. And just for reference, if you wanted to do this the traditional way, what you would do is go to chat.openai.com, which is ChatGPT's official website, and you would need to have at least a plus membership, which costs $20 a month, to use the same model that we're going to be playing around with today. And for those of you who don't know what GPT-4 is, by most metrics, it's the most powerful LLM, large language model, that you could be using privately today. So without much further ado, let's jump into the web browser. Just for your information, I'm going to be using the Safari web browser, which for now is my favorite out there. And I'm going to navigate myself to bing.com. And as the page loads, we're gonna click on the chat icon that you'll see at the top of the screen. And this will basically take us to Copilot. And Copilot is the magical tool that lets us use GPT-4 straight out the box. And I'll ask it my first question. What is the weather in Miami right now? And as you can see, it's given me a comprehensive answer with a number of different links, taking me to weather websites. And so here's the first huge benefit of using bing.com with Copilot rather than the free version of ChatGPT from their website. Because if you are going to use the free tier of ChatGPT, you're going to be using the 3.5 model, which has no access to the internet. Whereas in Bing, we're using GPT-4, which has access to the internet, which is very handy in situations like this one, where I do actually want to know what the weather is like in Miami right now. Another thing I really like about Copilot is that it gives you all those actionable links at the bottom of your response, which you can just click into. So let's see the BBC right now. And it just confirms what we saw in the response a second ago. And same goes for AccuWeather. Now let's go ahead with our second question. Since the weather is quite nice in Miami, let's find out how we can make our way from London to Miami and for what price. And you also get a little pop-up from bing.com with its travel tool that helps you find your best flights. Personally, I've never used them before, but it is a nice touch to your response. And surely it's another marketing funnel for Microsoft to pull in new customers to use their tools. If you have a keen eye for detail, you might have realized that we have a little two of five at the bottom of our last response. And yes, that does mean that our conversation will end once we hit that fifth response. But there are ways to mitigate that limit. And one of the ways you can increase that number is by using Microsoft's Edge web browser, which again is kind of a marketing campaign for people to start using more of Microsoft's products. But I mean, they're giving it to us for free, so why not? Ironically, there was always a joke that Internet Explorer or Edge is a great tool for installing Chrome or Safari, and that's about it. But here we are, the tables have turned, and now we're using Safari to install Edge. But since we're already using an AI assistant like Copilot, why not ask him to show us how to actually install the application? So I'll just ask it to download Edge for Mac. And it gives me the link to the website where I will be able to download the browser. So I'll install Edge and we'll continue the tutorial in that web browser. And here we are, back in Copilot, except this time in Microsoft Edge. And let's use one of the little prompts at the top just to see the difference. And at this point, I'm gonna stop to say that I think that this is one of the most underrated little features of ChatGPT and Copilot and all those other different LLMs. Those little prompts that help you understand how you can start using those tools. And so we're gonna ask Copilot to summarize the latest evolutions in the world of AI. And so we're gonna get a comprehensive answer if you're interested pause the video and have a read. But what I wanted to show you is that at the bottom of this response, we have a little one of 10. So we've already doubled our quota of prompts. And the final piece of advice I wanted to give you about expanding the number of prompts that you can make to Copilot is to simply sign in, because up until now, we've actually been signed out the whole time. So once we do that, you'll need your Microsoft account to do that. Once we ask a question, you'll see that we're up to 30. So simply by installing the Edge web browser and signing in, we've jumped from 5 to 30 prompts, which is great. I don't think I really need more than that, unless I'm holding a really long conversation. But if this is free, 
I don't think we can complain. I mean, 30 prompts in GPT-4 for free, that's a great deal right there. And just for the sake of this example, I've asked Copilot if I should buy a road bike or a mountain bike. And as you can see, it's even given me a number of different links to buy the bike directly. Very useful. I really am getting the feeling that it is an AI assistant. GPT-4 within the ChatGPT website is a great tool by all means, but it doesn't give you that experience of actually being your assistant and giving links to things that you might buy or need more information for. The next thing I wanted to show you in Copilot is that you can have three different modes in which you can hold your conversation and they are creative, balanced and precise. And so if you're trying to write a long story or an email to a colleague, probably the creative one will be the best one. Balance will be something in between that and a very precise and short answered, straight to the point kind of responses that you'll get from the last one. So let's see what the creative version of Copilot is gonna recommend if I ask for a meal for four people for dinner. All right, cool, cool options. I think I'm gonna go for the taco balls, but using beef. And let's ask Copilot to give me a shopping list, which I can then use. And so it's giving me the answer and it's even given me the macronutrients that we're gonna have in our meal. But what I want to do is I want the answer in the form of a table and Copilot can do that for me as well. And let's have a look at some of the options that we have for each of the responses. So if you scroll to the bottom of it, you'll see a number of little buttons at the bottom. And the first two is a like and dislike button, which we can use to teach the model how to react to us in the future. Then we have a copy button and a download button, which allows us to download the response in the format of a Word document, because it's Microsoft, or a PDF, or just classic text. The next one is a share button. And the way it works is that you can actually share your conversation with Copilot. So let's copy it and see how it works. So we'll paste the link in another browser window. And you can see that it's only the part of the conversation where I asked for the tacos doesn't hold the rest of the conversation in just for privacy purposes most likely and the last element that i wanted to show you is that because we've asked for a table it's going to give us an option to edit this table in excel again because it's microsoft so if we click into excel it will take us into a brand new document where we can do all our alterations and save it for later the next big thing about using copilot is that you get free access to dali 3 which is OpenAI's image generator. And the great thing is that it actually doesn't have a lot of censorship around it. So we can easily ask for a painting of the Mona Lisa in the style of The Simpsons, which would be impossible if you were using the standard ChatGPT. And there you go, four beautiful paintings of the Mona Lisa in the style of The Simpsons. Another cool use case I wanted to show you is, well, because Copilot has access to the internet, you can easily grab a link to an article or a website and ask it to summarize whatever is under that link. And so here we have the biggest Oscar snubs and surprises 2024. And Copilot gives us a beautiful description with a number of different links to all the different stories from the Oscars this year. So there we have it. We have a GPT-4 model for free, which also has access to the internet and can generate images and is basically a great AI assistant that you can use for all sorts of tasks, whether it's personal or at work or anything in between. And now let's move on to the negatives because unfortunately everything has its pros and cons. And fortunately, Copilot, at least from my research, doesn't have that many negative traits, but I do have a list of three items that I wanted to show you. So the first one is that if you've ever used something like role assignment or priming, which are techniques for prompt engineering, which I've explained in a previous video, which I'll link up somewhere over there. Unfortunately, you won't be able to use those in Copilot, or at least I haven't been asking nicely enough to do that. So as an example, I wanted to assign the role of an interior designer to Copilot in this case. And unfortunately, what he told me was heartbreaking. I'm sorry, but I cannot do that. I'm not an interior designer, nor can I pretend to be one. I am Bing. Well, there you go. We're not gonna fool him. Then I wanted to see how creative it can get and I asked it to answer my questions in the form of a poem from now on. And again, to my dismay, he told me that he can try but he can't guarantee anything. Which is strange because in the original ChatGPT version four, you could ask it to write a song in the style of Snoop Dogg about 
sniffing flowers or something and it would do a really great job so i'm surprised that it's limited in this way maybe that's microsoft's way to opt you into going for the pro version of copilot which we'll talk about in another video but let's see for now if he's gonna answer my next question in the form of a poem and i'll ask her what is the meaning of life and well i'm not a poet but this is not even close to anything that resembles a poem. So in terms of using creativity and some of the prompt engineering skills, GPT-4 from Copilot doesn't do a really great job, unfortunately. And speaking of roles, you can't use custom GPTs like you would be able to in ChatGPT. And personally, I think that's a very small price to pay for, well, not actually paying anything for this tool. And this takes me to the point which actually is a little bit painful. Unfortunately, Copilot does slow down with time and it gets painfully slow. But if you start a new conversation, it gets back to full speed. So if you see it slowing down and lagging, just start a new conversation. And ooh, one last thing I remembered. One last thing is that if you go through this video again, you'll realize that some of the UI elements of Copilot don't load up. So right now I do see the Copilot GPTs and I do see my recent conversations. But if you scroll somewhere halfway into the video, you'll see that none of those elements were present on the screen. So it's not very consistent. And I think it's just poorly designed from a technical perspective. But overall, again, this is incredible. You get GPT-4 for free, you get 90% of the features, and you don't have to pay the $20 every month. So I think it's a great win. And I, for instance, will keep on using Copilot until ChatGPT brings in new features, which will pull me back. Because for now, I don't really see the point of paying that extra $20. And on that note, I am going to leave you to it. And I hope to see you all very soon. Take care.